This is Sid Meier's Pirates, released in 2004 on PC. Uh oh. Have you ever wanted to live the life of a pirate? Find buried treasure? Win battles by land and sea? Will you retire as a respectable governor? Or a decrepit wretch? The choice is completely yours. Mostly. This game is based on the 1987 original. I never played it, so what's that all about? Pirates 1987 was the original Sid Meier's Pirates game. It used the graphics of an Atari game. Not much is known about how the game played out, but there are pictures of it. If anyone has the game, please add pictures. <laughs> Thank you, Hyperdam2000. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. In terms of story, you start as part of a rich and influential family. But all that changes when your fortune is lost at sea. Your family is enslaved and your estate is taken away by the evil Marquis. Ten years later, you set sail to the Caribbean, and then, as the opening cutscene finishes, you are given complete and total control. So what is Pirates? It's essentially a collection of minigames joined together with what's basically a ship sailing game. None of the minigames carry much depth, and the sailing in itself is ironically just as shallow. So why do I love this game so much? Well, it's all to do with the presentation. Pirates is such a charming game in every small detail. The character models, the animations, and even the music evoke the swashbuckling vibe of old Hollywood movies. The cutscenes are all short, colourful, and bursting with character. You won't even mind that you have to watch the same ones over and over and over again. Yeah, there's two more transitions in here. There's one, and there's the other. Yeah, get out of here. Now, let's move on to everybody's favourite thing. Resource management. You have four main resources to manage. They are gold, used for purchasing upgrades, goods, and special items. Food, used for feeding your crew. And then there's morale. If morale drops too low, then you get the absolute pleasure of watching your crew abandon you the moment they set foot on land. However, there was one more resource that I didn't mention. Time. Yes, just like in real life, time will wither you and there's nothing you can do about it. At 18, you are at peak physical performance. Then time moves on. At 25, you start slowing down. By 30, you'll be an old man, your old bones creaking with every motion. Only the luckiest will make it to 40, but by then, what's the point? If you spend too much time sailing from port to port, wooing every woman you can find, you'll never have time to find your long-lost family. If you spend your youth tracking down your family, your weak, frail, 28-year-old body will never stand a chance against taking revenge against the man who did this to your family. This is a game about doing as much as you can with the time that you have left. Before I talk about gameplay, I want to talk about how this game holds up in the modern day. Honestly, the game looks great for a 2004 game, and that's mostly due to the fantastic art direction. Highest resolution? 1280 by 960. Widescreen? Never heard of her. This is what the game actually looks like on my monitor. I think it's finally time to talk about the controls. And boy oh boy do I not like these controls. You'll be using the numpad by default. Small laptop owners need not apply. For the most part, the controls are bearable. At worst, they're horrendous. Have a look at this. So I have my control layout down in the bottom right corner. If I want to access another layer of controls, I need to hold the shift key and then press the numpad. But then there's another layer of controls under the control key. I... If you want to change these, you'll have to delve into the game files. There's no in-game options to change the controls. I, however, played the game completely vanilla so I could enjoy the full, frustrating, agonizing experience. But who knows, maybe you'll enjoy it. So let's finally talk about the actual gameplay. When controlling your ship, you can turn left and right, sail with full or reefed sails, and use your spyglass to look out for other ships. Much like this recording session, wind will play a huge factor in this game. Sail with the wind and you'll be at your destination in no time. Sail against it, and you've got a painful journey ahead of you. Jesus, they're not gonna make it. When in ship combat, you steer the ship broadside and fire your cannons at the enemy. 
The cannons can be loaded with round shot for destroying the hull. Chain shot to rip down the enemy sails. And grape shot to gun down the enemy crew like dogs. If you sink the enemy, you get nothing. It's all lost to Davy Jones's locker. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh no. No, 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 no! If you attempt to board the enemy, they might surrender if you significantly outnumber them, or you'll have to fight the enemy captain. And that brings me to the sword play. You have high, mid, and low attacks, as well as parries. Duck under an enemy's high swing and you open them up to an attack of your own. You fight until you push them to the other side of the screen. If it's during a boarding, the crew will fight in the background until one side runs out of sailors. Then that side will automatically surrender. Sometimes an enemy duelist will be so good that you might just need to survive until the crew wins the battle. It can get pretty unfair sometimes. Oh jeez, no. Alright, if I lose I'm gonna scream. So you win the battle and take the ship. You get all the goods and the gold and maybe some new recruits. You can add the ship to the fleet or you can send her to the depths. Ships can be upgraded, repaired and sold at ports. Goods can be offloaded or bought and there's an entire dynamic economy to exploit. Go into the tavern to recruit more boys, learn some intrigue or buy mysterious new items. And you'll need those items too. I wasn't joking about time management. Your character is dying and every moment on this earth is agony for him. Items are the only thing that will give him a competitive edge. They can range from armor or weapons to give you an advantage in duels, a fake mustache to trade in enemy towns, or even some fancy boots for the mini game that I probably spent the most time in. Dancing. Of all the mini games, dancing is probably the most time consuming. A simple duel can be as quick as 10 seconds. Every dance takes a minute and a half. That might not sound like much, but in a game as fast paced as this they can really stand out. So why are we dancing in a game about piracy? To impress the governor's daughter, of course. You can dance by following her gestures and pressing the corresponding key. Impress her, and you might get a gift, a secret, or maybe true love. This lady gave me a piece of a map. Can't wait to see it. Oh, thanks. Dotted around the map is buried treasure. Everyone belonging to a notorious pirate. The map pieces come together to give you a clue on where to find them using towns, directions, and landmarks. It's actually pretty good sometimes, but then north of Grand Granada will send you on a several month trek through the jungle. It's not always fun. Of course there are more mini games, but some I'd really rather forget. If you're after something with depth, this isn't the game for you. It's shallow, repetitive, and relies purely on presentation alone to keep you going. Every town is functionally the same. The characters are all reskinned archetypes from town to town. Your own character is a blank slate, a caricature of every heroic pirate story you know. At the end of the game, my wife's name was the governor's daughter of Petite Goava, and she looked exactly the same as every other French governor's daughter. There's no way to speed up time during long voyages, and if you sail against the wind, life is hell. You fight the same Spaniard Baron Raimondo, and defeat him countless times to get information on your family's whereabouts. Every time you defeat him, he respawns somewhere else and you get to do it again. Marquis Montalban is the same and at a certain age, he's almost impossible to defeat at higher difficulties. It's a deeply flawed game, but I played past all those flaws. The freedom of the game is what kept me going. Being able to go anywhere and do anything within the limits of the game. Fighting large-scale battles, taking cities for your nation, rising through the ranks of the English, French, Spanish and Dutch navies, finding lost cities. These are the things that kept me coming back. The freedom to do what you want. When my arthritic 36-year-old hero finally bested Marquis Montalban in a duel, I looked back at the amazing story that led to that point. All the successes and failures, the defeats, setbacks, and ugly dancing partners. Despite the tedium and frustration I felt at times, it was all worth it to reach that point. And that's it. That's Sid Meier's Pirates. Do yourself a favor and experience this game for yourself. You won't regret it. Mm -hmm.